Hi, McGinn students and families. Welcome back. I think we're on our uh, fourth read aloud together. I figured today we'd do a chapter book. I uh, hope you guys are getting into the flow a little bit with this at-home learning. I know it's a little different. I do miss seeing your faces in the hallways and in the library. And I know having spoken to a lot of the other teachers in the building, they're missing you too. And I know uh, everyone's been reaching out and we're gonna get through this together, everybody, okay? So for today, we're gonna read Our Principal is a Wolf. And I have a feeling that our principal is a lot better than this one. We'll probably do today, guys, half of it and then the other half tomorrow. I don't think we'll be able to get through the whole thing today. Let's see where we get. Chapter one, the luckiest principal. A few days before spring break, Ms. Moore held a secret school assembly while Mr. Bundy was away at a meeting. She had a special plan she wanted to share with the students and teachers. Next month is Mr. Bundy's fifth anniversary as principal of PS88. I would like to get him a gift from us to show our appreciation. Everyone loved the idea. Mr. Bundy loves clothes, said Nancy. Let's get him a tie. He's got so many ties already, said Roger. How about a new belt for his bike, asked Max. Mr. Bundy rode his bicycle to school, rain or shine. A new bike belt would be good, said Mrs. Feeney, but I think he just got one. Thinking about Mr. Bundy's bike gave Ms. Moore an idea. Yesterday, he got caught in the rain riding home from school, she said. Why don't we get him a rain poncho? one that he can keep in his briefcase. The idea was a big hit. Knowing Mr. Bundy was a shark dresser, Ms. Moore said, I'll pick up a shiny red poncho, one that will match his shiny red bike. At the end of the week, Mr. Bundy held his own assembly to wish everyone a good spring break. It was the perfect time to give him his gift. Alice, a kindergarten student, sang a song she wrote for the occasion. Happy anniversary, Mr. Bundy. Thank you for all you do. You take the best care of our school, so we want to take good care of you. Miss Flipsky wasn't here, guys, to sing that. So you know she's got the talent in that area, and I do not. Thank you, everyone, said Mr. Bundy. I am the luckiest principal in town. He wiped the happy tears from his eyes with his crisply ironed handkerchief. Then he put on his new poncho and got a big round of applause. Spring break turned out to be chilly and rainy. So Mr. Bundy got to wear his new poncho a lot. Riding around town, he waved to his students, who were glad to see him enjoying his gift. Looking good, Mr. B, they all called. Chapter two, greetings. On the last night of vacation, Mr. Bundy's phone rang. It was Ms. Moore. She sounded awful. I have a terrible cold, she moaned. I'm sorry, but I have to miss school tomorrow. Mr. Bundy exclaimed, poor Miss Moore, we'll miss you, but you stay home and rest. Mr. Bundy wanted to do something to help his good friend and assistant principal feel better. So he got to work making a hearty soup for Ms. Moore. The next morning, Mr. Bundy got up extra early to leave plenty of time to deliver the soup before going to school. Since it was, a drizzle, since it was drizzling lightly when he started out on his bicycle, he put on his beloved red poncho and pedaled toward Ms. Moore's house her house was outside the town, a little way into the woods. As he pedaled along, Mr. Bundy sang new words to the tune of Alice's song. I'm on my way, Miss Moore. I thank you for all you do. I'm very sorry you're sick. My soup will be good for you. Mr. Bundy was happily singing and pedaling and pedaling and singing when he saw a hairy bearded man right in the middle of his path. Greetings, said the man. Who are you and where are you off to in such a hurry? I'm Mr. Bundy, the principal of PS88, and I'm delivering soup to my assistant principal, Ms. Moore. She's sick with a terrible cold. Oh, how nice of you, said the hairy bearded man. This was just the kind of opportunity the hairy bearded man had been waiting for, he thought quickly. Soup is a fine thing to bring, he said, but take a look around you. With all the rain we've been having, the flowers have grown very beautiful. Wouldn't you like to give your assistant principal a pretty bouquet? Mr. Bundy looked at the flowers. That's an excellent idea, he said. Tell me, where does Ms. Moore live? Asked the hairy bearded man. I'm new in town. She and I might be neighbors. 
Mr. Bundy described her house and location exactly. Ah, yes, I seen it, and it's lovely. I'm glad we had this little talk, said the hairy, bearded man. Mr. Bundy couldn't help noticing the man's long nose and big teeth. In fact, he reminded Mr. Bundy of his great uncle Jasper, but there was something different about him. He just couldn't put his finger on what it was. Take your time picking your bouquet, said the man. I think you will find that the most beautiful flowers are a little deeper into the woods. The hairy bearded man wanted to give himself as much time as possible to carry out his plan. Thank you, said Mr. Bundy. A bouquet to go with my soup will be perfect. Mr. Bundy leaned his bike against a tree and started into the woods to gather the most beautiful flowers he could find. Meanwhile, the hairy bearded man raced to Miss Moore's house. Mr. Bundy had been right about him. There was something different. The hairy bearded man wasn't a man at all. He was a hungry, young wolf in disguise. Oops. Chapter three. Yum, yum, yum. It was good of Mr. Bundy to give me such exact directions, thought the wolf as he set off from Ms. Moore's house. It didn't take him long to get there. Knock, 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 knock. Who is it? Called Ms. Moore, weakly from her sick bed. It's me, Mr. Bundy. I brought you some goodies, answered the wolf. Oh, how nice, said Miss Moore. But I'm a little too weary to come to the door. There's a key in the flower pot. Let yourself in. Those words were music to the wolf's ears. He found the key, and before Ms. Moore knew what was happening, the hungry wolf ate her up in one big bite. Yum, yum, yum. That assistant principal was a very tasty treat, the wolf said to himself, and I bet the principal will be even tastier. The wolf quickly put on one of Ms. Moore's nightgowns and, night and a nightcap he found under her pillow. He hopped into her bed, pulled up the covers, and waited for his next delicious course. A short time later, Mr. Bundy arrived at Ms. Moore's house with a soup and a huge bouquet. He was surprised to see the door wide open. Maybe she's feeling better and has gone out for a stroll, he thought. Ms. Moore, Ms. Moore, he called. I'm in here, said a raspy voice. My poor friend, she sounds even worse than last night, thought Mr. Bundy. He took off his poncho, hung it on a chair, then went to her room. He saw Ms. Moore in bed with the covers pulled up almost to her nightcap. He thought her illness was making her look very strange. My, what big eyes you have, said Mr. Bundy. The better to see you with, said the raspy voice. What big ears you have, said Mr. Bundy. The better to hear you with, said the raspy voice. The bed cover slipped down. My, what big teeth you have, said Mr. Bundy. The better to eat you with, said the raspy voice. Then the wolf popped out of bed and gobbled up Mr. Bundy in one big bite. Soup, flowers, and all. Yum, 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 said the wolf, smacking his lips. That was a very tasty principle indeed. And we will pick up tomorrow with the rest of this. But as you can see, this is obviously following a very popular fairy tale. It's what we call a fractured fairy tale. See if you can explain that term if you know it to someone at home. If not, you guys can look it up together. But I look forward to seeing you again uh, tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. Miss